want to welcome everybody to this next uh, lesson. This is on the Gospel Harmony. And uh, in this section, you'll find the information on that. Uh, is a PDF file. Uh, it is rather long. If you do not want to print it out, I would encourage you to have something to make some notes on uh, that you can match up later on. Um, and uh, so we're going to begin. I'm going to pull up uh, the Gospel Harmony uh, sheet. Uh, that you will have let me get to the top of mine and uh, the first two pages really talk about um, the beginning of Jesus's public life but what I'd like to show you is um, kind of what is uh, the gospel harmony and that is the is the harmonies that really take all the gospels, put them in parallel columns uh, to kind of see the stories. And uh, the editor or whoever is putting the harmony together arranges the scripture, what are sometimes called uh, parochopes, and um, there we go, uh, in the order that they think the the stories belong. And uh, one of the um, ideas that comes out is there are several advantages. One is uh, when we look at the Gospels in a harmony, it gives us a well-rounded view of Jesus' life. It also makes uh, comparison of parallel text easier. I can see, okay, in Matthew it was in these sections, Mark it was here, Luke it was here. And I can look at all the stories together uh, that are around the same topic. So let's say the feeding of the 5,000. You go to Matthew, read his story, Mark. I can look at all the texts, compare them, uh, understand um, how they are. It makes it a little bit easier for us. It also could uh, cut down on the repetition of reading the same scripture. So if I'm going to go, I'm going to read through the Gospels, and I want to uh, read Matthew, and then I want to come to Mark. Well, I don't want to read the same things again, so I want to look for the things that uh, are only in Mark, but haven't been in Matthew, and then the same thing with Luke, and, and the same thing with John. The Really, the main disadvantage is that it's going to blur the lines. Um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John each write from a different perspective. They have a distinct approach to Jesus' life. And so uh, when we do this, we can blur the lines by not taking into account that Matthew is writing to Jews where John is writing to everybody. Or Mark is writing uh, to Gentiles, and uh, Luke is writing to Roman Gentiles. And so uh, we can blur that line a little bit, uh, but these are the advantages um, that we see. Uh, and so I want you to know, um, if I were you, I'd make sure I knew uh, what those uh, were. Now, uh, as we look at this uh, harmony, uh, this first page talks about the Jesus' public ministry. Uh, each year kind of broken down. The first year of his ministry was kind of in obscurity. Uh, then he had a very popular uh, middle section, feeding the 5,000 during that time. And then uh, we would have uh, it's begin to become rejected by uh, the Pharisees and, and those who are unhappy with them. And then we come into uh, the last week, uh, the Passion Week of Christ. Now, as we get to this harmony, I'm going to move through uh, this section. Uh, kind of trying to show some of the things. I'm, I mean, by far, not going to look at all the verses. I'm going to point some things out to you, uh, some that, that you need to be aware of, and uh, then um, uh, really kind of focus in on the end of Jesus' life as we look at all the stories together. Now, uh, first of all, I want us to know, you see here we have uh, the pre-existence of Christ is the very first item. Uh, that is in John. And uh, I'm actually going to make that a different color. Uh, let me make that black. That would be easier to see. 
There we go. Um, and here uh, from John, uh, the first uh, chapter of John through verse 18, uh, that's the story in the in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Talking about how Christ has always uh, been. Then uh, we notice here, uh, we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the columns. And remember that um, Mark and Luke are the most chronological. So a lot of the order is based off of these two uh, Gospels right here. But you notice here uh, that we have the genealogy of Christ. Um, and that is in Matthew. Then we have the genealogy of, of Christ through Mary. That is in Luke. Remember, Matthew and Luke are the only two that have the genealogies. Uh, Luke's is later into the gospel. Matthew starts out that way. We notice here, uh, we then begin the birth sections. Now remember, Matthew, Luke, only gospels to talk about Jesus' birth. So you have some stories that happen only in Luke. Gabriel announcing John the Baptist's birth. Uh, Gabriel visiting Mary. Uh, Mary going to Elizabeth. Uh, the birth of John the Baptist. All of that's only in Luke. Then we learn, hey, Joseph had a dream. Matthew's the only one that tells us this. Then we have, go back to Luke. We learn about the shepherds coming and the circumcision and the temple. Hey, that's only in Luke. Matthew tells us a different story, and that is the wise men and escaping Herod. All of that is only in Matthew. So there's different births accounts, different stories that are being told between these two Gospels. Now, down here, uh, we end with the childhood of Jesus, so Jesus' uh, family uh, coming to Jerusalem. Now, from around the ages of uh, 12 to 18, Or what are called the silent years. We don't know what happened. Um, and uh, there's no record uh, biblically of what happened uh, during those times between around 12 to uh, you know 18, even beyond, um, really even later uh, in Jesus' life. Now, let's scroll down. We begin to look at the ministry of Jesus. Now, what you're going to notice in here, again, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, you see here, Matthew, Mark, and Luke spend time, okay, John the Baptist, Jesus being baptized, the temptation of Jesus. You can notice here, uh, Matthew spends about 10 verses, 11 verses. Uh, Mark spends two. Uh, Luke uh, spends about 13 verses. John, nothing. But then we notice John comes in. He recounts Christ's baptism. Doesn't tell us the story of it. Uh, and then we come into some section of teaching that is only in John. Now, I want to point out to you. Oops. This is the first miracle that Jesus ever performs is turning the water into wine. Um, and uh, as my daughter says, I'm just saying, uh, you might want to know that. Uh, it's the very first miracle that Jesus performs. And that is only recorded here in the Gospel of John uh, that is not listed any place else. Um uh, and so we can continue to go back and forth. Uh, Harold imprisons, uh, Herod imprisons John the Baptist. That's only recorded in two of the Gospels. It's kind of referenced in Luke, not directly mentioned. And we come back to John's teaching. Remember, 93% of what is in John is only in John. So when you see things that are typed here or put in John, you're not going to find them other places. Mark. 
93% of what is in Mark is either in Matthew or Luke. Very few times will you see a verse or verses listed in Mark that's not also mentioned in one of the other two, either Matthew or Luke. Okay. So down here, uh, Matthew and Mark have something in common. Mark and Luke have something in common. Uh, here, all three. Now, as we continue uh, just kind of scrolling uh, through this, um, we come to a time, uh, you know, in kind of the order, uh, as we look at this page here, um, we notice again, Mark and Luke being the most chronological, uh, it's pretty much going to just flow in order, Mark and Luke. So notice over here in Matthew, uh, we have a story from chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 9, chapter 9, 12, 12, 12, chapter 4, 5, 5. So Matthew kind of groups things together. Mark and Luke are most chronological. Um, and so you got to kind of, under, again, understand that that's kind of the order of the way they write. That's one of the disadvantages. If we're trying to do this, we're taken away from their understanding. Now, again, you notice in here uh, from John, we have the section John healing on the Sabbath, and then we have this huge section all the way down to the bottom here, where nothing that co comes from one of the other Gospels is recorded in John. Remember, I'm going to scroll to the top. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all about Jesus' public ministry. John, private stuff, conversations. So John doesn't focus a lot of things that Jesus did because that was already covered by the time he wrote. We've already talked about that. So John's focusing on the private. Do notice here that he returns to the 12. He begins to teach them. And then what we notice here, is Jesus feeds the 5,000. If you'll notice, that is written in every gospel. It is the only miracle that Jesus performs that is in all four of the gospels. Now, uh, you can read the stories, and it's interesting. You read Matthew, kind of tells us one perspective. Mark tells us that we learn something from each of the accounts that we don't learn from another account and uh, I would encourage you to take some time look at those accounts kind of see some of the differences uh, some say 5,000 some say 5,000 uh, in just the men you know and where we got the the, the the loaves and the fishes the teaching that Jesus is, tries to include in that especially in the Gospel of John now, we come down to the top of the next page. We notice we got this big, huge section of Jesus' uh, teaching privately uh, that is only in John. Now, we're going to come to the section here in Luke, starting in chapter 10. I get to the top of the page. And what we're going to notice here is that this section right here, chapter 13, and then starting down at the bottom of the page a little bit, I'll scroll down in just a second. This is all parables. Luke does a lot of the parable teaching, gives us a lot of the parables. This is nothing but parables, one right after the other. Starting at the beginning of chapter 10, now let me scroll down. There's a little break in this in this order to give some teaching from John. Picks back up in chapter 13 and goes all the way down to the to the beginning near the beginning, uh, just past the beginning of chapter 17. All parables uh, that Luke gives us. And if you noticed, none of the other gospels tell us those parables. If I want to study parables, I'm going to go to Luke. And so uh, those are. You kind of again, we kind of be able to see that without having to read. I can kind of look at that and say, okay, 
I want to say parables, I'm going to go to Luke. I want to say Jesus' private ministry, I'm going to go to John. Come down, we have some uh, John's teaching again. And when we get to the top of this page right here, right before it says Lesson 10, uh, this right here where it says Jesus ascended to Jerusalem. Oops. Now, this is the beginning of what we call the Passion Week. And we're going to see a lot of here, beginning of what Jesus does. Notice it again. The triumphal entry is mentioned in all four Gospels. A little bit different story of what he does. Uh, but all Gospels mention Jesus coming in Jerusalem for the very last time. Now, as we go through this, um, we're going to see uh, that there's a lot that goes on in this week. Notice here in this section that really begins with Lesson 10 is uh, all this items that goes on during this beginning of this Passion Week. If you notice, John does not record any of that information. Again, private, private information. Now, come down, we begin to see the plot building here beginning in Lesson 11. And then what we're going to see starting here, where it says uh, Fellowship in Upper Room, right? is this is the beginning of the Last Supper. Now, we're going to notice here is Matthew, Mark, and Luke are going to tell us a little bit. There's a lot of things that only John records. John records more stuff from the upper room uh, Last Supper teaching than all the other Gospels. Uh, there's things that are in John that are not in the others. Luke talks about the dispute about being the greatest disciple. Uh, Jesus predicting uh, the denial. Uh, that's only in uh, Matthew and Mark. And so we see this big difference that's coming about. Again, John recording a lot of the teaching uh, that went up there that's not in the other ones. Okay? From beginning of chapter 13 to end of chapter 17 of John, all upper room teaching, not part of the other Gospels. Now, we're going to notice um, now as we enter into Gethsemane, Jesus goes to pray in the garden. Uh, the mob comes to arrest Jesus. And Peter decides that he is going to cut off one of the chief guard's ears. Now, this is the last miracle that Jesus performs. It's actually recorded. In all four Gospels is the last miracle uh, in reference in some way. Uh, but this is the last miracle that Jesus performs before he is crucified. Now, um, you read uh, the other day, uh, I read about uh, the arrest of Jesus, his trial. And uh, we're gonna, I'm going to point out uh, some spots to you kind of put them in order uh the first here would be in john where annas questions uh, jesus that's his first trial then we come down here caiaphas that's his second trial sanhedrin that's his third trial uh, jesus before pilate that's his fourth jesus before herod that's his fifth and then uh, coming back here, where Pilate uh, releases Barabbas, uh, that is his sixth 
trial. And so um, we understand that uh, Jesus had six trials uh, very quickly. And we're talking about the time of that in just a second. Uh, but uh, they're spread out through the different Gospels um, and understanding. Look here, John only records the, the conversation of the part between Pilate and Jesus. Now, I want to stop here before we pick up here in, in this Lesson 13 section. And I want to flip over to give a discussion on time. Now, the Jewish day is a little bit different than uh, our normal day. We say starts at midnight, ends at midnight. Well, Jewish day begins and ends at sundown. Uh, all Jewish celebrations start at sundown. And will go, uh, for example, if it's a day, it will go from sundown to sundown. Usually that's around 6 p.m. Now, nighttime is broken up into what are called watches. Uh, sundown uh, to 9 is the first, 9 to midnight, second, midnight to 3 a.m. is the third, 3 a.m. to sunrise is the fourth watch. Now, daytime is a little bit different. It's broken up into hours. So, we'll say 7 a.m., we would say that's the first hour. 8 a.m., second, 9, so on. So you read in, in the last section of Christ's life when he's being crucified, it might say the third hour. Well, that is approximately around 9 a.m. Or at the sixth hour, that's approximately around noon. And so I want us to understand as we talk about, uh, look at this last part of Christ's life, uh, that this is kind of the way when you read, you say, well, what's the 12th hour? Well, that means it's around 6 p.m. right around sundown. So uh, if you need to write this stuff down, pause the video, and then uh, come back to it. Now, so I'm going to pick back up here, okay? Because, for example... Uh, right here at the bottom of this page, it says he is crucified the third hour. Well, that is around 9 a.m. And only, this is one of those very rare times, only Mark gives us that information. The, uh, the two robbers who uh, are hanging there, that's an all four. A pilot writing the inscription, all four. But that ninth hour, when Jesus goes on the cross, only recorded in Mark. Now, uh, we continue on. For example, here, darkness from the sixth to the ninth hour. All four, all three Gospels tell us, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, noon to 3 p.m. So the darkness sets in. Okay. And that's for about three hours. Then, come down here. Uh, we have this idea of Jesus bowing his head and dying. We learn okay, uh, that that happens okay, uh, around the ninth hour, which would be around 3 p.m. And we see this series of events that happens. They take the body, okay. um, they place the body, they come back, they're going to roll the stone away, and um, we see the rest of what happens in the Gospels at that time. Now, one of the questions I get uh, quite frequently, well, if Jesus died Friday at 3 o'clock, and he was resurrected Sunday, at say six o'clock in the morning well technically that's not three days well if we go back to this time period okay jews believe that the day begins 
at sundown. Okay? Now, whether something occurs in Jewish life, whether something occurs at the beginning, right after sundown, or right before sundown where the day ends, it happens on that day. It's a day. So, Jesus is crucified on Friday. He dies right before the day ends on Friday. To Jews, that is a day. doesn't matter time. We're talking day. So, Friday, one day. Sundown to sundown on Saturday, that's two days. Third day starts sundown coming into Sunday. That would be three days. So, I've broken it down for you to look like this. Again, if you need to pause the video to write it down, you can do so, and then come back. Uh, and this is, some of this up here is uh, best guesstimation. He goes on trial before Annas, uh, maybe around midnight, on Friday. That's one day. Still on Friday, trial, trial. He goes before Pilate, Herod. He's led away to Calvary. He's hung on the cross the third hour. That's at 9 a.m. Noon to the sixth hour. Darkness sets in. He cries out. The ninth hour. Okay. Uh, he, Christ dies. Okay. That's the beginning of the first day. Now, Christ has to be in the tomb by sundown because that's when the Passover starts. So sometime during that day, during that time between 3 and 6, he's placed in the cross. That's still one day. Okay. Uh, so, 6 o'clock Friday to 6 o'clock Saturday is day 2. 6 o'clock Saturday night through Sunday is day 3. That's kind of how we get the third day. Time-wise, yes. If you go with number of hours, that doesn't add up, but it does with the days according to Jewish uh, customs and Jewish teaching on the issue. Now, I'm going to flip back over here to the Gospel Harmony. The rest of the Gospel Harmony, uh, we see the t teaching of Jesus' resurrection, um, and uh, some of that is actually listed you see here from 1 Corinthians, we learn a lot about the resurrection of what happened from the beginning of 1 Corinthians. Um, and then Luke, remember, he also writes Acts, is going to summarize this back in here uh, when he gets to the beginning of the book of Acts. Now, um, if you have questions, uh, please don't hesitate uh, to email me. Um, and I hope you uh, got that information. You need to go back, watch it again. And uh, just make sure you've made some good notes. Have a great day.